Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Lauren Tessier, and today I'm going to be talking about the connection between mold exposure and autoimmunity. So let's get into it. So to start off, we're going to talk about what happens with a normal immune system when they're going through development. We're then going to talk about where it goes wrong and how autoimmunity then develops. And then we're going to talk about what we actually see in the medical literature for how autoimmunity is correlated with mold mycotoxin exposure. So we'll start with the how. So your immune system is self-educated. The education of the immune system starts in the bone marrow and then in the thymus and then it goes more into the periphery. And kind of each stop is a process in education of the immune system of what is self, meaning don't attack it, and what is not self, meaning that's the enemy, that's the outside force that we need to protect ourselves against. And so with a normal functioning immune system, your body works really closely with your immune system and your immune system understands what's hands off, what to not go after. But at some point, for some folks, we start to see this self-attack on our own body. And what comes with that is the production of antibodies that go and attack our organs. Now, antibodies stick to problems. I'll just label it like that. They stick to problems in the immune system, essentially flag them for these problems to be destroyed or removed. And so In a normal functioning body with a healthy immune system, we really shouldn't be making antibodies towards any part of our body. There might be a small exception here and there, but mostly we should not be cranking out these protective antibodies against ourselves. What we see in autoimmunity is that the immune system starts to get confused. There's too much background noise for many different issues. There's no one clear cause of autoimmunity. But what starts to happen is the immune system starts to get confused and there starts to be an increase in specific cells called your TH17 cells. The T stands for T and the H stands for helper. So we have our T helper 17 cells and we have found in the research that the TH17 cells, when they are increased and our other helper cells are decreased, that's when we start to see a higher risk of autoimmunity. Now, of course, as you know, our cells secrete, they release all kinds of signals and inflammation. They talk to one another and they go back and forth chatting. And so what we see with a spike in our TH17 cells is also a spike in the autoimmune inflammatory signals. And these signals They have lots of different alphabet soup names correlated with them, IL-6, IL-1B, TNF-alpha, IL-17, nothing that you guys really need to lock into your memory. But we do see these spike with autoimmunity. More specifically, we also see these spike with autoimmunity for those who are mold and mycotoxin exposed. So that's the how. So let's get into what the research actually shows us. So we'll start off with just saying that there was a Finland study of school teachers and staff who were exposed to a water-damaged school. What the study found was 36.6% of those employees developed autoimmune issues. Now, that might not seem important, but if you stop and you actually compare The prevalence of autoimmunity in Finland, where the research was done, we typically see that only about 5 to 8 percent of folks in Finland develop autoimmunity. Only 5 to 8 percent. The staff at this particular school had a 36 percent risk of developing autoimmunity. So a huge increase from just the exposure to that water damage building alone. And so what they also found there was about one out of 30 not only developed autoimmune issues, but very, very, very rare autoimmune issues. And so thankfully, we have these studies that look back on these different groups of people 
and were able to correlate their exposure to water damaged buildings, mold and mycotoxins to what was happening in their body. And so we've also seen different studies that look at folks who are water damage exposed, mold exposed, mycotoxin exposed, and we see increases in kind of the the overarching antibody to the self, also known as the ANAs, the autonuclear antibodies. We also see an increase in the anti-smooth muscle and anti-mitochondrial antibodies. Those are quite liver specific. And then we also see quite a few antibodies to the nervous system. And that includes both the autonomic nervous system, the part that controls your flight and flight versus your rest and digest, and also your peripheral nervous system. So kind of your your uh, nerves that move, your muscles that help you feel and experience the world. So we see an increase in those types of antibodies for folks who do have a history of mold and mycotoxin exposure. Now, if we go a little bit deeper and we examine people who already have an autoimmune issue, we see that folks who have MS, ALS, and even systemic sclerosis, these folks tend to carry a higher fungal burden in their microbiome. Now, our microbiome exists all throughout the body. It's naturally part of us. Ideally, it doesn't cause issues. However, again, in these folks, we see a correlation between an increased fungal burden in their microbiome and these disease states. Additionally, we have also found that folks who have some pretty severe autoimmune issues have a correlation to antibodies to fungi. So what this is saying is that as their body is fighting themselves, the autoimmune component, their body is also spitting out antibodies to fungi, which means that the body has seen fungi, it sees it as a threat, and so it's letting us know that there's some type of fungal exposure here. And so that correlates with lupus, psoriasis, Crohn's, ankylosing spondylitis, MS, sarcoidosis, the list can go on and on. And in fact, we see that in some studies, treatments with antifungals can improve clinical outcomes of certain autoimmune issues, such as psoriasis and MS. And additionally, almost in comparison to that, we see that fungal exposure in humans can worsen hemolytic anemia in even something called primary sclerosis and cholangitis, which is also a liver gallbladder issue. So those are kind of the human studies. And there is some correlation there. And of course, as always, correlation is not causation. But we need to be mindful that this is something that's in the literature. It is a possibility. And we need to make sure that we are taking these things seriously when people do develop autoimmune issues. And then we wonder if their environment has anything to do with it. Now, I'm a big believer in looking at animal studies. And the reason why is that these are the same studies that we use to develop all of our medications to understand different disease states. So we can't throw the baby out with the bathwater and simply say that just because a study is an animal study when examining mold and mycotoxins, you can't necessarily say that it's worthless and it's not helpful for us because then we'd have to throw out all of science that's based on animal background, which uh, if many of you know about uh, medical studies, it's the, the first step in our, our medical studies. So what I do want to mention here is that there are some animal studies that show that there is an actual increase in the gene expression for type 1 diabetes and autoimmune thyroiditis in animals who are mold and mycotoxin exposed. Additionally, there are animal studies wherein they induce an autoimmune-like illness. So let's say um, they are wanting to study mice who have an autoimmune neurological disease. They will find a way to induce that disease state for them. And then what they do is they then study. They'll like put in a drug or they'll expose them to something. So we call that, you know, in an experimental autoimmunity. So in these studies, we have seen that experimental autoimmune conditions 
in animals, when these animals are exposed to mold and mycotoxins, they get a worsening of symptoms. And so I'm not saying that they're causing these issues, but I am saying if you have potentially a predilection towards autoimmunity and maybe low level and sneaking around in the background quiet, and then you throw someone into a mold or mycotoxin exposed water damaged building, there is the possibility that those symptoms will bubble up and maybe that autoimmunity could make itself known. So what we see in these animal models is exposure to mold and mycotoxins exacerbates the autoimmune conditions of colitis, kidney autoimmunity, lupus, neurological autoimmunity, rheumatoid arthritis, and other autoimmune conditions that go after even our uh, collagen production. And of course, rheumatoid arthritis being one of those. So what I really want you to stop and just take home from all of this is if you find yourself in a situation where you might be navigating autoimmunity and you're scratching your head and you don't know why, but yet you know you are mold exposed, whether it's school, work, home, it might be worthwhile to consider the role of mold and mycotoxins in your unique autoimmunity. So with that being said, I really appreciate your time. I hope you found this video helpful. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Of course, you can go ahead and find me across most social media platforms with the handle at Life After Mold. So thanks for joining me and we'll see you soon.